So you click on this video and if you think that you should maybe get one of these uh, M1 Pro MacBook Pro if you are a student. Um, okay, let's reconsider it. So I'm at, the reason why I'm actually making this video as a student's perspective, I bought this laptop. I thought mainly for editing video, editing this video. But recently, because I just got into college, Work is a huge pain in the butt. I have to start doing a lot more work than I used to do at high school. I actually always just been using this one for studying. I actually been using it at coffee shops, at restaurants, at libraries, and I pair it up with the uh, my MacBook Air. Uh, I use it as a second display. Sometimes I use it to take notes. Basically, the experience was absolutely amazing. So this Apple has 120 Hertz Pro Motion. It just very smooth. Like I also just got the uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max. It also has Pro Motion. The only thing that doesn't have Pro Motion right now is on my iPad, which I used to have an iPad Pro, but I kind of downgraded to iPad Air. I give the iPad Pro to my mom. So actually the only that is still 60 Hertz is my iPad Air, but which I feel like it doesn't really matter because um, the majority of the time I use my iPad Air is as a second display, which usually the smaller one. So it's the one that I'm not really looking at constant. Basically, those are just non-important stuff. So majority of the time I'm actually looking at this screen. So right now you actually see it's connected to an external display. Like I said, majority of the time I'm actually using the software is actually out on a coffee shop. So I'm not actually using that display. That's the display only here when I was gaming. Let's talk about this display here. So this display is absolutely gorgeous. So mini LED, this is the first time I'm actually using mini LED. I used OLED before, but I never used mini LED before. So I actually don't know this one thing that people People keep saying blooming uh basically when a super dark pixel and super bright pixel together and uh, you can see the bright pixel kind of lighting up dark pixel around them way like it should be black i check it out uh basically even on oled screen there is blooming for example on my iphone you can still see blooming on here you can also still see blooming but on the mini LED is a little bit more than the OLED, but I, I mean, on the iPad Pro, this generation, this is the Apple second generation or second product that has the uh, mini LED technology, which is being greatly improved. So the blooming issue is being greatly reduced. I don't find there's any issue at all, to be honest. You can see blooming, but to be honest, if you, like if I'm watching a movie, and all my focus is on that blooming. I'm really like that movie it should be extremely boring. Like I'm not really entertained by that movie. Here's the thing. So people used to say that if you have to look for a problem, then it's not a problem. I have to look for it. So it's not a problem at all. So another thing I want to talk about is 16 inch versus 14 inch. That's the thing I was kind of like wondering the most. Should I get a 16 inch or 14 inch? Let's say, let's say you do have a budget. Let's say you can afford 16 inch, but like you don't want to squeeze that tight you can't use that money for something else i here's the thing so it dep definitely depends on case by case so if you are a student that use um external display most of the time a 14 inch is probably your better bet to be honest right now i'm working my car uh which i don't know a lot of people do this or not but i do have a little like a tray table over here and i can put my laptop this is a 14 inch m1 pro base model i can put it right here and i don't have my ipad with me i can put my ipad on here where i'm taking notes if i'm uh, writing down something or doing like a math lecture i can also literally use my magic keyboard to prompt the ipad up and i can use that as a second display and use it like this if you have the 16 inch you might still be able to do so but it's a little tight uh right now i can also have like maybe like a drink on here ipad on here and yeah i still have relatively big space to comfortably like put my arm after you if you only have like one computer and you do do creative work like video editing or let's say gaming which i'm gonna talk about later you do kind of want the 16 inch it does give you a better experience if you don't mind the extra weight or extra size 16 inch is better otherwise i'll say you might probably just put in either put into what's extra money into a 14 inch and buying a bigger hard drive or just spending on somewhere else another thing i want to talk about the mini LED is the dark is really dark i don't know if they actually turn off those pixels or not, 
but it is extremely dark. It's just OLED dark. Like, for example, if you tell me this is OLED screen, I can't tell. I, I think it's an OLED screen. This is extremely dark uh, with this MacBook. The screen is absolutely amazing, even though, for example, if you do work at home, you do have one of those big external display. I still recommend you using this uh, MacBook screen because it probably better than most of your external display unless you have a multi thousand dollar TV in your home. By the way, this new keeper feels really nice. This one does feel a little more tactile to it, like more than the old one. So it feels even better, but it's pretty similar to the old one, but it feels slightly better. I've been writing a lot of essays in college, like in college. <laughs> I've been typing all day long, my finger is like, <laughs> I have, I write so much essay that make my typing speed is faster. So I've been actually typing on this keyboard pretty much all the time. The keyboard feel really good. All right, so another thing I really want to talk about is the battery life. So we all know M1 or Apple Silicon in general has great internal battery life, but the problem, I use M1. M1 has great battery life, but when I switch to this M1 Pro, it the battery life is a little strange. In general, it does have better battery life, but the consistency you get is a little different. So M1 is basically, you know, your regular consistency. Like if you use a more power hanger program, you use more power. And if you just browsing the web, you use less power. And it's pretty consistency pretty much every time. But this is different. So someday I will bring this laptop out and uh, I will just basically work on editing video on Premiere. I add a little bit, not too long. Uh, I use Google chrome to uh watch uh maybe a little video uh typing majority doing research open quite a bit of task which that's what i do when i do research for, for my essay and uh, someday it's like i can go long like i can go whole day and still have like 70 percent of the battery life but someday like today i was been sitting here for about an hour or so i did i did a little video then i hop on zoom uh attend off my lecture class and uh i did go a little bit wide browsing i go bought a pants on lululemon's website and it's almost dead it's only been an hour so the consistency you get is very strange sometimes google chrome use more power than premiere which is very strange and sometimes it just keep going for like two days three days so i don't really know why that was the thing and uh another strange thing i find out right here if i can show you guys okay it doesn't show me like this but if you use adobe creative cloud you know there is a software called adobe creative cloud basically you get on there you can download all your software and you can upgrade upgrade your software in like a menu looking thing it's kind of like steam when you download game it's like a library, but same thing with Adobe Creative. I, I don't know if you understand me, but if you don't understand me, you don't use Adobe Creative Cloud, that's fine. That is just like a menu. Imagine you open Steam in the background. It's just a menu. If you didn't open any of the game in the Steam, it's not gonna use any power. But same thing with Adobe Creative Cloud. Adobe Creative Cloud kind of just running in the background. I didn't use any Premiere or Photoshop, any power hanger program. And the way I go to the battery life icon and it says significant battery usage and it says Adobe Creative Cloud in there, but it just opened in the background. It was updating. I wasn't using any program in there. It wasn't syncing. I don't know. It just drains the battery like that. So the consistency is there, but still it's going to still be better than most of the laptop on the market. So at the end of the day, this is a MacBook Pro video from a student perspective. So a lot of things I was talking about in the video doesn't really necessarily apply to a use of a student for example so if you don't have mini led it's not like you're not gonna be able to finish your homework you have to need the mini led or the hdr display and uh same thing with the speaker system it's not like if you don't have the six speaker audio system you're not gonna be able to listen to your lecture or anything in terms of a need you don't need as a student for sure but in terms of if you have the money and is this gonna be a better experience for example because you're a student or you're a content creator or student plus content creator uh, or a coding student basically type of student that require you to sit in front of a computer for a long period of time uh, yeah go buy it because it's a good investment it's gonna make your time easier all right that's the conclusion Thank you